Hi and welcome to the channel. I'm Sam and this is the Crafty Blinder van build. In today's video we're making some bunk window surrounds. Hi and welcome back to the channel. So today's video is about these window surrounds. But I'm also going to show you what I did for these wall panels. We didn't want to decorate them with material. We didn't want to have anything on there that could stain or or look tatty after a little while. So we've covered it with vinyl, and it's a it's like a white limed vinyl from was it Wilkinson's? Yeah, it was about five or a roll, but it did the job and it's made it look really tidy. So I'll show you how I done that, and I'll show you how I made them, and we'll show you the curtains. <laughs> I've lost my finger there. I've lost my train of thought. We'll show you the curtains that are inside them. After the ceiling install, I had a few panels left over. A couple have been delivered damaged and Merlin's replaced them no problem at all. Rather than throwing them away, I decided to make some wall panels out of them. But when I was cutting them, I hadn't realised that I cut one the wrong way around. So when I offered it up, it was shown just bare wood. So I decided to get some cheap vinyl from Wilkinson's and cover them. The vinyl's really easy to work with and leaves a fantastic effect. The idea behind these panels is they can be taken off, covered with anything we want at any time and then put back on. So what I've done, I've manufactured a piece of timber to go exactly where this wall is. Um, it is exactly the same size and shape and everything. The window surround when it goes in will become part of this unit. So how we're securing it? Oh well, no. <laughs> Velcro tape. We want to be able to be at any time when we go, right, I do enough for this colour, let's change it as you would in your house. It's a matter of just taking this cabinet out, pull this panel off the wall because it's just Velcroed. The mattress holds the bottom in and cut two two screws, maybe four screws. Yeah, four screws along the bottom. The cabinet will hold the top in and the middle to stop it rubbing or moving is held by Velcro. So basically this is it. You just lift it up. You can't really see can you? Let's drop that down. So basically strip of Velcro there, one there and one about here. Just one about here. So we secure it on the bottom. Make sure it fits everywhere, get it past any obstructions, and then it's just a matter of pushing the velcro. And that is it, job done. We're having to use two different size pieces of timber today because when I went last night to get some more, there was none. One of the things I'll remember about lockdown is how it affected so many different parts of my life, so many parts of this van build. I was going to timber merchants that I've used for years and just not being able to buy anything. These guys were sitting waiting for huge orders in stock and value. And of course that value was then passed down to me and everybody else. It's just frightening how many livelihoods were affected. Simple things weren't simple anymore and that's the memory I'll take away from everything that's happened this year how hard everything became and trying to find the wood for these two little frames that's going to stick with me forever because everywhere I went the shelves were just bare and I've never experienced it in my life ah doesn't fit Oh, that's what I've done. After a quick trim, it fitted perfectly because I measured it correctly this time. It's a nice tight fit. <clears throat> with the frame pushed firmly back against the window, it was just a matter of scribing around with a pencil where the wall panel touched the frame. Now let's trim off, reposition that screw, we'll glue all these joints 
you can see there there's a line might not be able to see that to be faint but we'll trim up to this line and that's it top offside so you've got pairs it's always a good idea to mark them up so you can distinguish them because once they're cut they will look the same it was a matter of just trimming off the excess then and doing some fine tuning with the sander to get as close to the mark as we possibly could. Okay, so I took a piece of 6mm ply I've drawn around the frame and I've given a 15 mil space each side and internally a 10 mil. Now this here should look pretty good. To get the corners, I've used two bits of tape. So basically, I've gone to the corner, I found a radius that I like. That's quite nice and soft and gentle. Um, and this one, slightly smaller. Yeah, knock that bit of wood off it. Let's put that away so we don't break it. So yeah, I found a smaller roll of insulation tape and I've used that for the internal and this for the external. And then just drawn it on all the way around. So now it's just a matter of cutting this out. Once I was happy that everything lined up as intended, it was just a matter of pinning it in place. Now I bought this tool especially for this job and I really enjoy working with it. I'm going to have to go and find some more jobs for it. It was a lot of fun to use. But like most jobs, not everything goes to plan. Then. Let's try and offer this up. I'm doing it one handed because I forgot the. Oh my, that looks good. This one's. <laughs> there you go. How good does that look? Now, I am going to cover that now. I was going to paint it. I think I'm just going to cover it with some uh, trim. Don't know what colour yet, but I just think that would look nice, covered with some material. And so with that one. So I've left a little bit of a recess here. I'm going to get some curtains made. I'll get some rail, screw that in there and above. And then we'll have a curtain that basically just pulls back to this end. And at night time we can pull it that way and maybe maybe have a touch splits in the middle yeah and pull it back to there but yeah we've got a curtain made for there we'll also get a reflective made for there reflective 
screen made for that as well. I think that will look cool. I decided to give the frames a lick of paint just to give them that little bit more protection. You know, they are going to be up against windows. The windows could be left open or they could have a bit of condensation sitting on them. The last thing I want is for the water to get into the wood, cause any damage or cause any mould. With a little bit of paint, we should be able to seal it up enough to prevent that happening. Right, let's go. So this morning we're off to Workington. We're going to drop these pieces off. The frames for the windows. Let me show you what I did last night though before we leave. I put, put the runners inside. I've painted them up so when they fit these curtains just a matter of installing them. Still got the fronts to cover. Um, yeah, not a problem. Shut this door. Mm -hmm. Right, let's go. There's the van. So we've been playing around with decals. Um, we stuck a couple on there. Or on the door. A few more to do, but we'll, uh, we'll sort that out soon. This is Swags and Tails in Workington, and they're going to make the curtains for our bunk window. Little did I know that on the 6th of January, we went in our third lockdown and it'd be nearly four months before I could get the frames and the curtains back. So basically, all work ground to a halt on the bunk windows. Okay, we need to mask up this part of the frame. We don't want any glue on there. We want glue on here, and on the insides, and on this bottom face. But we don't want nothing on here. So, let's mask it up. I forgot to press record. So what I've done is, I've come an inch and a half inside, so around about 35, 40 mil. And what we'll do is we'll trim that out now, so when we spray everything, um, no we don't, we won't. We'll actually leave that in place. And when we spray, we'll spray that piece. I hadn't realised at the time, but I'm actually using the wrong spray. This is just a standard spray adhesive. And what you require for these window surrounds is the high temperature adhesive. It makes all the difference. Over time, the normal adhesive will just melt and you'll have to go around and repair them. Something which I've done recently. So you'll see there's a little bit of glue in it. That's got to help us. It's gone off, it's not sticky. It'll hold this in place for us. Just needs a few minutes in the sun and then we'll stick it all together. Keep stay down. <coughs> Come back in five. Okay, that's had a few minutes flattened about in the wind. They didn't do anything. <coughs> Time to now put it all together. Fluff it up. Then
закрыл. Now it's a little bit wavy, but it's close enough, I think. A little bit out on this edge here, so let's just pull it back a little bit. We'll come back here. Again with this edge, just run it over, take the gap all the way along, I'm happy with that. So we can now start working it in. Ah, nearly. Okay, we'll have to fold up too far. See the deliberate mistake. Get the masking tape. Well, we'll uh, just start folding it in. these pieces here. Stay about 10 mil away from the edge. And just cut it. Come to the corner, roll it up, round. the internal corners go in stay again about 10 millimeters away and just work your way around I think that should do it so we've only got a thin edge up here to fill this time slide that one so we are going to have a bit of fat to trim it here so you've two ways of doing it you can trim it now or trim it when it's on I tend to trim it when it's in situ. So as you work with it, you might find you get bits that aren't that sticky. If you do, just pull it back off, give it another go with the glue. Uh, 
now because we've masked that up this never had any glue on it before so this time when we stick this back we need to work this down pretty quick and then trim that off There you go. And it goes off, so trim that off and tidy it up. That's this round's done. Just need to work, work them in a little bit. A couple of little stray bits to tidy up, but that's it done in all reality. Happy days. These are the rails. There's two sides to them, two profiles. We want the this one here, the quadrant side of it, to stick out of the window frame. That'll sit in like that. And the other edge in the top. Both ends done top and bottom. I now need to mount the rail back on both ends there's one in the middle same on the bottom screw there screw there and one there and that's it like i said before there's no end caps on these because they drop right into the side of the frame so these won't come off once that's done we'll tidy up this edge where we've got some overspray and then we'll screw the popper studs in and job done Okay, we've got both rails screwed in now, top and bottom. We've just got to do the pop studs on the end. And then I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, pop of studs are now screwed in. Everything's lined up. Time for the big reveal. And that's the finished article. A little clean off. Here's the hoover up, dust off, screwed in, but it's my curtain. They weren't that tight of fit when I built them. It's changed.
And there you go, that's our curtains in. Our surrounds are mounted now, and our blackouts are in our bunk window. And <laughs> I think you'll agree, they look pretty impressive, don't they? Well, that's it, end of another video. Thanks for watching, we'll see you again. Thanks for watching to the end. Without you guys, this channel will be dead in the water. Remember, you can follow us on Facebook and Instagram at The Crafty Blinders. If you like what we're doing, please remember to subscribe, like and share with your friends. Until next time, take care and we'll see you again.